Hey guys, what is going on? I hope you guys are doing well out there. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are talking about jet turbines. Now in the last couple months, you guys have requested more videos on turbines. You wanna see in particular what actually goes into one of these jet turbines to actually run this jet turbine. Well, we're gonna cover that right from the fuel cell, going through all the components into our jet turbine. Also, at the very end of the video, we're going to dive in underneath this deck and take a look at some of the components, the electrical components that make up this jet turbine. Now, they're not specific to a jet turbine, but they're definitely something that I do not see in many other of my radio-controlled airplanes. Now, if you like jet turbines, make sure you ignite that like button below. It certainly helps support the channel, and I hope it also does something for the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started and talk about what we have right here in front of me, which is known as our fuel cell. This is where all the fuel is stored within a jet turbine airplane. It's right here in the fuel tank. It's no different than a gasoline powered airplane or even you can say a nitro powered airplane. What is very important about these specific airplanes is that the fuel is placed right on the center of gravity. You can't go ahead and pick where you want your fuel tank to exist. You can't go and have it up here or throw it back here. It has to go here. Why? Because you have a full condition and you have an empty condition. And during those two different conditions, your fuel tank is going to weigh a different amount. We have to go and place it over the center of gravity so that it is going to make sure that it does not adjust our center of gravity as we are flying and burning away the fuel. Now this fuel cell holds 125 fluid ounces of fuel, which works out to about 3.7 liters. It has your typical vent line here at the top. If you overfill this, yes, fuel will start pouring out the side. The vent comes out of the side of the fuselage. It's actually on my side here of the airplane. And we have our typical inlet or outlet depending on which way you're looking at it from the fuel cell this is where it goes into the next stage now some of these tanks specifically for this airplane you can actually get it so that you can have these partitioned into two different chambers this one is only one partition it only contains one area where you can have fuel in a two partitioned fuel cell you can actually have one partition is going to be the chamber that holds fuel for smoke. Let's say you're going to want to burn smoke to have a whole plume of smoke coming out the back of your exhaust. You can have that specific fuel tank to separate your smoke fuel from what runs your turbine or even gas engine if you run a gas powered airplane. This in particular, like I said, it is only one chamber. So from there you have a fuel line that goes into the first component. Now this component that we're about to talk about is extremely important. It's one of the most important things for the reliability of your jet turbine. Our, our fuel goes right into this component and it is known as an air trap. It is essentially what separates the air out of your fuel system. You can see that it has one line that does come out of it. So this here, this loose line is known as what we are going to use to fill our jet turbine with fuel. So obviously you are able to pump the fuel either manually or electric. Hopefully it's electric. Otherwise it's going to get really old trying to pump 3.7 liters manually every single flight into your tank. Uh, this one here, you pump the fuel in and it goes through the air separator first and then ends up in the fuel tank over here. We can see that it has three lines. One we just talked about. Then you have the one that goes to the next component and then the other one is where it comes from our fuel tank. The reason why this air trap is important is if you have a small amount of air that happens to make its way into the pump that we're going to talk about very shortly here and towards the turbine jet, you can have what is known as a flame out. Now a flame out is where the engine completely stops running and if it does you have to go through the entire start sequence all over again. It's going to take quite a bit of time there to get that turbine fired up up again. From the air trap we have the line that makes its way to the next component. It comes out of our air trap and then makes its way into this valve. Now this valve here is in the closed position. If I were to swing it open that would be the open position of the valve. So we're going to obviously leave it in the closed position for now and there's a lot of debate where the position of this valve you should put it. Should you put it before the next component or should you put it after the next component? That next component being our ECU which contains our pump. Now the reason why there's debate is because there's advantages and disadvantages from each way that you want to go and have your jet turbine set up. I'm not going to get into the very, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of how setting it up in each way is. I actually see both sides of the story. I understand why guys want to put it either before or after your pump. 
However, we'll save that bit of information for another video. Obviously, the only thing that the valve does is controls the flow of fuel. It's either on or off. That's all you get from this. Uh, when you're not using it, you have it off. When you are using it, you have it on. It's pretty straightforward. The next component that we have, I'll actually take this off so we can see it a little bit better, is our jet turbine ECU. This is obviously what is important for the critical running of our jet turbine. It goes right from starting it up to shutting it down and everything in between. It does pull power right from this three cell Lifey battery pack. There is no switch from the battery pack into the ECU. It is a direct connection that gets plugged in here using what is known as a multiplex connector. Once you have that powered up, it is then going to be able to operate as well as send power to our starting motor and also the fuel pump that is found inside. The fuel pump obviously controls the amount of fuel that gets pumped to the jet turbine. That is a very critical component in order to maintain the operation of the jet turbine. What you'll notice is that there's three lines that come into this ECU. Two of them go towards the jet turbine, and then one of them obviously is your input to the ECU. The other thing that you'll notice is that it does have a power output that is coming out. This power output makes its way below the deck, travels all the way to the back of the airplane here, and plugs right into our jet turbine. This is what is for our starter motor on the jet turbine. It provides that power to spool up the turbine in order to get it started. And that's what you see there. So let's go ahead and follow these lines. Now the reason why we have two lines is here on our coming out from our ECU is because one of them is for starting purposes and then the other one is your main burner. Now of those two fuel lines that are coming out, each one serves a different purpose. We have one of the fuel lines here. It actually has a different diameter than the rest of the than all of the other tubing that's used. The input to the pump is the biggest diameter. Then you have an output that is second biggest in diameter, and then you have a third output from the pump that is the third in diameter. It's the smallest diameter. The smallest diameter fuel tubing here is for starting purposes. It allows the dirt turbine to get fired up. The second largest is for the main burner of the jet turbine. Between both of those allows the function full startup and operation of our jet turbine. We go ahead and we follow that all the way to the back of the jet turbine. Now I'll try sliding this airplane so we can see more of what's happening in the rear of this. Hopefully it doesn't fall off this tiny little table. So there we are, we have now the jet turbine here. The fuel, as we saw, comes in through this small tubing here. It goes right into the top of the turbine, and then we have another piece of tubing here. That is our main burner line that gets plugged in around the side here as well. Same sort of plugs being used, which is just the push in and they automatically lock. Our power that we said is right here. We have this going to the turbine. This is gonna be for starting purposes. Now this jet turbine, although it may appear small in physical size, it actually makes a lot of power. This is known as the turbine that fits the 100 class. Now 100 stands for the amount of output that you get from the turbine in terms of newtons of output. It is a nominal value. It doesn't mean it produces 100 newtons. In fact, it actually produces more than 100 newtons. Somewhere around 24 pounds of thrust is what this jet turbine produces. This turbine here burns about a liter of fuel every three minutes of operation at wide open throttle. And this is going right off of the manual with in the spec sheet. Now, if you want to learn more about this jet turbine, you can go ahead, hop onto our other video that is linked below that talks about exactly how one of these here works. Those are all the components right from our fuel cell to the turbine that allows full operation of this jet turbine. It's obviously very important, all the components that we talked about, it's also important to keep them as reliable as possible. So there you are, you're able to see some of the electronics that is found within this jet turbine. Now we'll go through this fairly quickly. Obviously you see three batteries that are here. Two of them are for the receiver. The first component that you can see right here at the top is the receiver. The receiver is a 12 channel receiver. Nearly all 12 channels are used in this turbine jet. Uh, that's got all different kinds of purposes. One channel is actually a gain for the component right below it. Underneath our receiver, we have a gyro. Now a gyro is not specific to a jet turbine powered airplane. You do not need a gyro. In fact, I don't actually use a gyro in any other airplane that I own. A gyro's main purpose is only to take the few bumps that you have in the airflow as you're flying to smooth them out so that you don't even feel them. That's its main purpose. It's not to control your flight. It's to only remove some of those gusts that you may feel from wind and other stuff that happens while you're flying there. Underneath our gyro is a component that might be a little more specific to jet turbines, but it doesn't have to be. However, if you do fly jet turbines in 
many parts of the world, this is definitely something that is mandatory. However, it doesn't need to be electric like it is found here. What is located underneath our gyro is what is known as our retract controller slash brake controller. Now it is definitely, like I said, mandatory to use one of those brake controllers or at least brakes on a jet turbine. It does not need to be electric. It can be air powered as well. However, in this case, we do have an electric one. It powers the retracts electrically and it also powers the brakes electrically. So there you have it. We're not gonna get into all the different servos on the airplane. You guys know exactly how that works. That essentially covers everything that we have here about our jet turbine and also our electric system here as well. I hope you enjoyed this video here, maybe even learning something about these jet turbine airplanes, all the different components that are used in order to get fuel from our tank right down into our turbine. We always have on Mondays an educational video coming out on something to deal with RC. If you want to see more videos like this one or several others that are on the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I certainly appreciate it. Until then, I hope to see you in that next video on Monday of next week. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.